Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 4975 and today we're going to be building another rally car to go down our rally course. <laughs> Now last week the Lamborghini LM002 did our fastest lap time so far with a 2 minute 05.159. Today we have something that I don't think is going to beat the Lamborghini but hopefully can at least stick with the cars that have gone so far. And of course it is the Pontiac Trans Am. This is the one that Burt Reynolds drove in the very first Smokey and the Bandit movie. It has a lot of off-roading pedigree. Muscle cars are well known for how good they are off-road and I'm curious to see how fast our rear-wheel drive cars can do on this course. So let's go ahead and upgrade the Trans Am. If you've not seen the previous two episodes, all the vehicles will be upgraded to S1 class. If they are able to be upgraded to the top of S1 class with their stock engine, they will keep it. Otherwise, we'll be swapping in a different engine. However, the vehicles must keep their original drivetrain. That means all-wheel drive vehicles will stay all-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive vehicles will stay rear-wheel drive. Front-wheel vehicles will stay front-wheel drive. And a lot of you are saying to me, well, why are you pitching all-wheel drive vehicles against two-wheel drive vehicles? Well, it's simply because that's what they do in real life. So let's see what we can do with the Pontiac. I know off the bat we're going to have to do an engine swap with this thing. We've had good success with the V8 in the Focus in uh, two episodes ago. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the V8 straight from the bat. We're going to be leaving the thing rear wheel drive. But I am going to go ahead and put two twin turbos on this thing. Now of course with this thing being rear wheel drive. The more power we have the less grip this thing's actually going to have. But we can go ahead and put on some aero parts that's going to make this thing stick to the road a lot better. I'm actually going to leave the stock hood because I like the Firebird logo. It looks really cool. Now all the vehicles are going to be fitted with rally tyres. Unless they cannot then they will be fitted with the off-road race tyre compound. And this is because... The first part of the course is on the road. I am doing this series to show you guys what some of the best vehicles are to upgrade in the game for rally building. And a lot of the rally builds, uh, a lot of the rally courses in the game are half tarmac and half dirt. And obviously the, uh, the off-road tyre compound here does still have some grip on the road, but then it has a lot of grip off-road, whereas the off-road race tyre compound doesn't have very much grip on the road so we'll go ahead and put those on we'll put on the widest tires we can 345s in the rear which is quite big actually then a drivetrain options and we'll go ahead and slap in the drivetrain options all the vehicles are going to be fitted with race transmission either the six speed or the seven speed if they don't have the six speed I'm not going to be putting a 10 speed in because I personally don't like it. And all the vehicles will be fitted with the rally diff unless they can only have the off-road diff. Some of the off-road vehicles can only have the off-road diff in them. And they will all be fitted with off-road suspension. We're going to go for full anti-roll bars. And if the vehicle can have it, if the PI allows, we will go for full weight reduction or as much weight reduction as the PI allows. Then in the engine parts, really here all we're doing is making up the PI. We've got 100 PI to play with. I'm not even sure if we're going to get to the top of S1 class with the uh, 6.2 litre V8. We may have to go bigger yet, but let's see. Of course, we have got the twin turbos to add quite a lot of horsepower but there we go with all the upgrades on the 6.2 litre we have a thousand horsepower 850 pound feet of torque 
2.9 thousand uh, pounds the thing weighs so just over uh, just over one and a half tons and we have a seven liter engine in there but unfortunately that is not high enough pi so we're going to go have to swap in um one of the other engines now i fear with this thing being rear wheel drive i don't think we're going to get a lot of pi out of the thing um but i think we're going to have to go for the 8.4 v10 which i am not complaining about at all uh, we're also going to go ahead and twin turbo the thing just to add a little bit more pi in there and now if we go ahead and upgrade this thing hopefully we should be able to get enough pi out of the car and for those who didn't know in the upgrade shop now you can actually rev your car to see how the thing sounds and the different uh, exhausts you put on the vehicle actually change the sound of the vehicle which is really really cool And with all the upgrades on this thing, I still don't think we're going to get very high uh, PI-wise. Let's see what we can actually get out of this thing. I fear with this thing being rear-wheel drive, I think that's as high PI as we are going to get. It is still S1 class, it is still rear-wheel drive. We've got 1,127 horsepower, 900 pound-feet of torque. The thing weighs a little bit more now. And we only have, uh, well, I say only, we've got an 8.5 litre V10 in there. Now, obviously, the V10, for those who don't know, they don't have as much torque as something like a V8 or a V6. Littler engines have a lot more torque than V8s, uh, than V10s and v 12 So, this thing hopefully isn't going to spin as much, but it has almost got a 1,000 pound feet of torque. So it's going to be questionable. There's going to be a lot of throttle control involved. But I'm going to go ahead and tune the thing and then we'll have three runs to see what kind of time we can put down in the Pontiac. All right, and here we go for our first run in the Pontiac. A little bit of throttle control off the line. This thing is wanting to spin in every gear. So I'm going to have to throttle control through this whole course, I fear. Up to the first water splash, we pretty much jumped over it. Now we've seen in previous episodes that you've got to slow yourself way down for that corner. Obviously with the rear wheel drive, we're going to see a lot of oversteer. Into the second water splash, slowing it down nicely for this corner. And into the deep water splash, we're just going to be spinning all the way up the hill I fear. slow it down for the right hander that's quite a slow corner we're coming up to probably my favorite corner on the course you can get a nice drift going here which we are in the Pontiac if nothing else the Pontiac is putting on a good show it's a fun car to drive if you've got the throttle control Slowing it down for the right hander and then we're coming up to the hairpin. Now this is where the Pontiac might come good with the hairpin. I'm keeping it in quite high gears to try and stop the wheel spin. I'm only going about half throttle through this whole course. But still we're not making bad time to be honest. I don't feel much slower than the previous vehicles that we've run. Then we're on to my favourite section up the hill here to the crest. Pontiac is just hitting the rev limiter through every single gear. Luckily, we're not having to use the brakes too much because I'm not using all of the throttle. I don't think I've gone wide open on the whole course yet. Slowing it down for this corner. We have actually got the grip to get through there. That's probably the cleanest, uh, cleanest take we've seen through that corner so far. A little bit wide on the exit there, a little bit of a twitch coming out as well. The sideways through the second to last corner, onto the last corner. We're already slower than 
the Audi coming down the hill here. Let's see what kind of time we can put down. It's going to be a 2 minute 26.413. Our slowest time yet. Slower than the Audi did a 2 minute 15. I don't think we're going to be faster than the Audi, unfortunately. I think that's just the way this thing goes. It's got a lot of power, not a lot of grip. And um, it's quite difficult to throttle control. But let's see what we can do in our second run. Okay, round number two. If nothing else, I want to be faster than our previous lap time. I am learning how the Pontiac likes to drive. It likes to drive about half throttle for most of the time. Down here, you can put your foot down. You can almost jump over that water splash and then slow it way down for this corner. Not too bad through there. I'm going to keep it in a bit higher gear through this course and see if we can actually control the wheel spin, slowing it down for the left-hander into the third water splash. Pontiac being quite a low slung muscle car actually gets slowed down quite a lot through there unlike the Lamborghini we saw in the last episode which didn't blink an eye but obviously that thing was an off-road vehicle coming into the drift corner here a little bit of oversteer coming out but nothing too serious I'm going to change up to fifth try and control that wheel spin put my foot down here on the straight this is the bumpiest section on the course the Pontiac though soaking it up pretty well all things considered coming into the hairpin I'm gonna leave it in fourth a little bit of handbrake action and that is a spin out that is actually going to avoid our second run so I'm going to restart it okay so with one run remaining We've got to make sure we don't spin out on this one, otherwise the first lap is going to be the time taken for the Pontiac. Spin out in the second one, disqualified that time. So let's see what we can do. Let's get it all slowed down for this corner. Little bit of brake block there. I am running this with um, until up brakes turned off. I don't have any traction control. Our stability control turned on so no driver aids just me and the machine and a little bit of throttle control I'm also driving this in manual so let's see what we can do coming into the right hander here let's slow it down a little bit wide on the exit and a little bit of oversteer that rear wing is not helping us greatly here Coming into the drift corner, pretty good through there actually, we didn't get much oversteer. Then we're on to the long bumpy straight section, I'm going to put my foot down, it's spinning a lot, but it's soaking up those bumps well as we saw in the last run. Okay, this is where we spun out last time, let's try and control it, I'm going to change down to fourth, I'm not going to go for that handbrake this time, I'm just going to take it nice and slow through there. Up to 5th gear, just going to try and keep it in the highest gear we possibly can to maintain as much traction as possible. Up the hill now. Pontiac not spinning as much as I thought it was going to be. I am only half throttle, but it's controlling itself pretty well. A little bit of a twitch there though. Coming up to this horrible, horrible corner up here, but we're not really going fast enough for it to be horrible. We're actually just going to drift around that corner. I'm going to put my foot down here and see if we can actually just pick up a little bit of time. That was pretty nice hitting the apex through there into the second to last corner. We're already slower than the Audi, but are we going to be faster than our first time? Let's hope so. I'm just going to put my foot down down here and yes we have beaten the Pontiac's first lap with a 2 minute 23.377 that is the time for the Pontiac it's our slowest time so far but we are going to be running many many more rear wheel drive cars in the future so hopefully the Pontiac is not going to be our slowest car for very long but at the moment unfortunately it will be 
Well, there we have it. A little bit unfortunate, but kind of to be expected. We had a thousand horsepower in a rear wheel drive muscle car off roading. So, unfortunately, the Pontiac is going to be our slowest lap time so far with a two minute 23.377. It is almost 10 seconds slower than the Audi Quattro, but that thing was all wheel drive, also had a thousand horsepower, and that was a purpose built rally car. So, I'm very happy with the Pontiac's time. We beat our first lap time. A little bit unfortunate that we spun out on the second lap, which actually voided that one. But still, the time to beat is 2 minutes 5 there with the Lamborghini LM002. And hopefully next week, my vehicle is going to be able to beat that. But that's going to be it for today. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could smash the like button and subscribe if you are new. But until next week, a goodbye.